the good days. Okay, we going we just gonna take clothes off. Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Jada. <laughs> How y'all doing today? Okay, you come up for giving a sick siren. What's going on? Pull the camera back on now. <laughs> I don't know what you got going on. Say hi to little blue <laughs> and his sister Sunshine. You know what I'm saying? It's another um, who's the sister? So actually, on the original Care Bears um, movie, as I you know I've done the history, you know he has a sister on the show. So you know I went out and um and purchased the sister. You know just um as Care Bears had. You know, the real Care Bears started kind of, like, reaching out to me. So just kind of to, like, you know, create the storyline. I thought it was kind of dope in the evolution of me. She's not someone that will probably, like, be around as far as within the character of J.Dot Brown. Um, but she's just kind of, like, you know, at home with me, um, you know, um, you know, at the keep him company. Right. Yeah. yeah. Listen, siblings should be together. And, and for those siblings should be together. You know what I'm saying? So learning that there is a, there is a, you know, you know. Uh, he has a sister, you know, I was just went on ahead and just put two and two together, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, we manifestating J. Dot Brown and the original Care Bears, you know, making a comeback. Right. All right. The black boy George. And for those <laughs> who don't know, and we're just going to um, talk to J. Dot Brown for just a moment before we get into what we do. Um, J. Dot Brown is a artist. Um, he's here in Atlanta. And he's worldwide also, right? Because we are all worldwide. We're worldwide, right. baby. Maybe household names. Right. Um, and you just released a single with um, someone I know and a friend to the show, Black. Yes. Tell us about the single. They, they say at night when the freaks come out, but it's the day and I want to party now. You know, shout out to BLAQ, DJ Payne One, um, the homie Benny Fane. You know, um, we have a new single out called Day Party, Freaks Come Out. And, um, and, you know, actually, you know, um, I chose Black to be on the song. You know, I had already created the song and, you know, had been seeing him do his thing. He's like one of, prop, you know, he's probably one of the first artists I've seen around within my peer group, you know, that I knew that was a part of the, you know, the LGBT community. You know what I'm saying? I don't think we're really classified by that, by how we carry ourselves and by what we rap about. Right. But, you know, just um, he was one of the first and, you know, he was doing this thing. And I'll never forget he did like a a remake of The Devil is the Lie by um by Rick Ross and Jay-Z. You know, um seeing him just perform that, like the the level of his of his artistry what he was talking about in his in his performance and delivery, you know, like out of all the artists I've seen, I was like, yo, that guy I wanna be cool with. You know what I'm saying? I wanna know him. So, you know, I just always started showing him respect. You know, when I would see him around, just showing love and then um then the bond just kinda of formulated from there and um now we got day party. Right. And y'all are Right, and y'all, I love the party. I've I've hung out with y'all, and y'all are definitely a vibe. Um, <laughs> so I can't wait to see some video. And I know you said I, there might be a remix of a, another song y'all might do soon too. So, but um, oh yeah, we got some we got some other stuff that we're gonna be working on. You know what I'm saying? He's a he's a cool person to collaborate with. You know, so um, we're gonna have the video coming out. You know, um, I'm not just going to say soon, you know what I'm saying? Because I actually wanted to have like a nice budget. I have a vision for what I want it to be. So, you know, um, you know, you have to work up to, you know, you have to work up your coins. So therefore you could be able to deliver what I want. You know, we might do like a little, a little regular, just little video just to put out for promo, you know, but for like the main video, I know exactly what I want. So, you know, um, so that, that's what I want for day party. In the meantime, you know, I'm also pushing um, 2 million up, you know, um, free Rashad Jamal. You know, if y'all don't, if y'all aren't familiar with Rashad Jamal, you know what I'm saying? He's like a a new age prophet, you know, in a sense that got jammed up by the, um, they got jammed up by the government. And now, you know, they, um, they defamed him as they always do. And then they gave him 16 years, um, to serve, you know, so therefore he won't be able to make a mark on people anymore, you know, um, the way that he did. So, um, so yeah, so shout out to Rashad Jamal, you know what I'm saying? That's a part of a movement that I'm a part of. You know, um, you know, just out here just doing what we're doing. So and two million up, that's the record. You know, I named it after him, you know, in support of him. You know, um, and I'll probably be dropping something else in a few days just to, um just because I got nominated for the ATL uh, Hip Hop Awards. Yes, he did. Congratulations. Yeah. I want to Thank y'all. Into what we do. And make sure y'all, y'all um, tune into our YouTube page online, as always. Um, you do, you have an, a business of your own. Um, Mr. Cake Me Happy. Yes. Uh, 
you can see on Instagram where you pour um, things in people's mouths. Things in people's mouths, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I could honestly say I think I'm the only person on earth, you know, that is allowed to walk around with a bottle of white stuff and, you know, and get men and females to, regardless gay or straight, you know, to open up their mouths and, and take some drizzle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um... <laughs> you know, and it's actually so weird because it was actually at the Atlanta um, Hip Hop Awards probably two years ago where um, I probably just started the drizzling in the mouth thing. I think that came from a couple that thought it was cute for me to do it for them. You know, um, then it just kind of went from there. But people was like, yo, you know, like you're selling sex, you know, and we love to see it. He was like, you know, they were like, where your bottle? And I was like, I don't care around a bottle. And it was like, you should keep the bottle at all times. You know what I'm saying? So that bottle is a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of money in that bottle. You know what I'm saying? Just because people like to, you know, people like to pay for a fun time. And, you know, I think it's something different. You know, it's all done in love. So, you know, um, it's not about anything else. It's just done in love and promoting and the business. Big cakes, too. And baked cakes, yes. I'm a cake baker. We're celebrating four years of anniversary right now. So I've been doing this since 2019. You know, um, I came home from prison. You know, in 2019, that was the last time I was away. You know, the only last time I would be away. You know, um, and you know, um, I kind of manifested it. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't know I'd be doing the cakes, but, you know, just always talking about how I wanted to take the pound cake, which is what my mom's raised me on, and make it, um, and make it better. You know what I'm saying? Like, not, not that anything is wrong with my mom's, but I love the crust on a real pound cake. Sara Lee, stuff like that, that's not real pound cake because they got no crust. You know what I'm saying? If you're using lilies, flour, I'm sorry, we're not on the same level. Swans down, you know what I'm saying? Swans down the red box, you know what I'm saying? Creates the best cake, especially when it comes to pound cakes, you know what I'm saying? It's sifted very finely, you know. Um, yes. And um, it's called Mama Ginger's, named after my mom's. You know, um, you know, we've been doing this four years now, so um, I'm, like, very, very happy. You know, we are, um, you know, I'm not really doing, like, a big celebration and stuff like that just because I'm, you know, doing other things in life right now. So I'll get to that later, but I will have something going on around Thanksgiving time, though. Okay, and can I ask a question? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. what, what's in this drizzle? Let's go back there. What, what's in this drizzle? So the, the drizzle is in, I can't say these words. <laughs> you know, they're going to they're gonna remember these things one day, you know, instead of trying to hold these against me. It's a it's a icing. It's an icing, you know, that is... um. <laughs> That, that that will put you in a very happy place and it's a cream cheese icing you know it's very good you know um it's Just very very me. good yes mm -hmm. hey, yes <laughs> you put you put i can't i can't we can't say that online actually you know what i'm saying because we live in georgia you know they, we have the legality of things so you know the future they're gonna you know they're gonna try to hold those against me you know but um but we're fine because it's done in love is this semen yes it, it's good semen too you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Real it's semen. Re good, real semen. Mm. <laughs> hey, I was gonna hire you for a party. <laughs> I didn't mind. <laughs> I think we should get a video. I'll be, I'll do the PG thirteens. I'll have the PG thirteen stuff for the parties. Got you. Hey, <laughs> okay. Well, listen. When, uh, when's I your birthday? birthday? March second. Okay. I don't know. You were giving me tourist vibes for some reason because you was very explicit about the food. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm a Pisces. You know, I'm very, very down to earth, I think. You know, I like, you know, kind of relate to like anybody's shoes. You know what I'm saying? I'm all about unity, you know, and love. You know, I think, um, I think Jesus, I think Jesus would have been a Pisces, you know, because I think it takes a lot of, at least for me, you know, I'm very, very unconditional love love people you know i think it also comes from the affliction you know being gay you know just having different things about you when you were young so you know i make you have a different outlook on life or on how to be open to people that you know sometimes people not open to you you know sometimes even in the, in the character you know that i am you know there's not pe there's people who at places you know don't like me because maybe they could see my gay you know and, um they don't understand how i could be so respected you know and still out here and doing what i'm doing but you know we um you have to just own all of it, you know what I'm saying, and just say fuck those people. I, I get that too, and but I do want to say that you are a real vibe, and every time you're around is very genuine, authentic, and you are a joy, a real joy, not a fake joy. There's fake people out there, but you are a real joy 
when you come around. So thank I you. appreciate it. I just want to say that. Yeah, I definitely thank you for, for your energy. Yeah. But we're going to get into what we do. I'm a co-producer here on the show, and we have mm-hmm. a segment called What We Do, where we have our fans, viewers, and supporters all around, everyone that loves us, right in just to ask us simply, what would y'all do? So this first one is from Taylor from Orlando, Florida. She says, me and my, <clears throat> he says, me and my best friend have been friends since we were toddlers and damn near like brothers. He's been married for five years and his husband and I have gotten pretty close. Well, more than close. See, and? last year, my BFF invited me, ain't there some bullshit? See, me, <laughs> see, last year, my BFF <laughs> invited me to have a threesome with them. And let's just say, that the sex opened a door that sometimes I wish I wouldn't have walked into. It was only supposed to be a one-time thing, but me, but me and his husband has still been sneaking around his back to have sex. I don't know what to do because I love my BFF, but I also love the sex with his husband and don't want to stop. What would y'all do? Woo! Jesus. Jada Brown, go ahead. You start. Um... I mean, it's, it's wrong all the way around the board, you know what I'm saying? But it's already happened, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, I've been a situation of some, you know, been a been a situation, been in a situation like that, you know. Um, and you know, you don't want to put yourself in those type of situations because sometimes you end up losing great friends, you know. Sometimes you don't know how a person really thinks of you until you fuck up, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, and you know, I had a situation like that that happened. You know, um, I wish I wouldn't have, I guess, maybe did what I did. But at the same time, I mean, it's already done, so you can't really undo it. You just kind of have to learn from the mistakes and just hope that maybe one day you and the friend will get in a better place of um, of forgiving. Yeah, you know what? I, I want to piggyback off that because I feel like what you're saying is like, you know, if, once you do that, you, you may ruin it more. And you may be left by yourself. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, you know, because I mean, you and the person have pro- probably end up having a connection that you didn't know that you were going to have that you probably didn't even lead into wanting it to happen. Right. But it happens, um, you know, and you make the decision in that moment to go along with it versus be like, no, you know, but, you know, it happens. And then you guys end up wanting each other more and more, you know, so, um, yeah, but all the time it kind of ends up leaving you alone. You know what I'm saying? Because even in my situation, me and the person don't really see each other, but more so because, because you know it is wrong you know like i mean we could give we could be like we don't give a fuck you know um but at the end of the day you know um you know it just it just is what it is you know it's a it's, you know it's, it's a, it touches your morals you know what i'm saying so it makes you reevaluate yourself you know some things you just know you don't want to do again because it wasn't the right thing to do well like what's your I'm, opinion i'm just saying like, like honestly because sex complicates a lot of stuff and a lot of situations and friendships i honestly i honestly say like abstinence abstinence can definitely help to heal a lot of wounds in the past and even though it is harder because we are men at the end of the day does abstinence include not checking off that's a good question because honestly some people say it don't some people say it do I think, honestly, if it's not done with another individual, I think that it is abstinence. Because if you're able to please yourself, then that definitely makes you happy. Um, And you don't have to run into situations like this. Because if you're happy alone with yourself and your body, you you can't really complicate it with other people. Yeah. Yeah. But... That's a good question because I did bring that up in a previous conversation with someone. They were like, you're not really abstaining from sex. I said, uh, I'm not having sex with someone else, but I don't know. So. Well, I love um, all you guys' pers- perspectives. It's, the door sh- You shouldn't have went into that door in the first place, sugar. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. She started off wrong, but she was honest about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna get into the next one, and this one, y'all, is very, very, very. Wait, very I, I just want to say really quick. I, I googled absent sexually. Mm-hmm. This is avoiding all types of intimate genital contact. Someone practicing complete abstinence does not have any type of intimate sexual contact, including oral sex. So genital, I mean, your genitals are on you. Yeah. 
so have, you could so you basically jack off and that's not and that's not and that's a part of abstinence. Like you can please yourself, you just can't have sex with other people. Okay. Yeah. I think if okay, you were celibate, cool. you wouldn't touch yourself. Because that would be the point of fighting the urges, right? No, because I mean, don't you go to like online and like watch a porn to like sometimes just like free yourself? Like if you're if you're like practicing not like if you're in a moment of where I'm not having sex right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, is it wrong to like just go find something that you like I, and then do it that yes, way? But I guess how I'm thinking of it is the point of celibacy is to have a, to recommit to yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and to value your body as a temple. Yes. Um, if jacking jacking taking care of ple- pleasuring yourself. Um, yeah. It's up the but flesh. You fall under those guidelines. It's, you know, you're pleasing the flesh. Yes. Yes. I think that would be, you wouldn't do that either if you were celibate, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? They said something about the build up, you know, to, to, to raise the frequency in you with holding the sperm inside of you. I mean, you know, in the Bible, you know, you couldn't even waste sperm on, the, on a bed. You know what I'm saying? That was like a offenseful sin. Okay. You know, um, sperm was well, only, I sleep in a pool made to go with inside of the vagina to you know, doing that, you know, so it, if you weren't, you're not supposed to jack off according to, um, the Old Testament. Well, it says sexual, a- sexual abstinence, also known as connotance, is abstaining from all or some aspects of sexual activity, often for some li- limited period of time, while celibacy may be defined as voluntary religious vow not to marry or engage in sexual activity. But it's still saying activity, it's not saying personal activity yeah 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 it's not because that's a very I mean, vague well, i think that's something that spiritually we know as as individuals you know um and some in my journeys you know what i'm saying like when i'm practicing not having sex i tend to try to not jack off because i feel like what we're saying i mean is giving of the flesh you know and then oftentimes after you've been jacked off then you actually want to go have the real thing so you know um so I, I think I think I think the internet is giving you the, you know, just the regular re- regular logical definition. But the spirit knows that if you're practicing abstinence, you shouldn't be busting them up. Yeah, it says masturbation. Someone said masturbation tends to negate the effects of celibacy for a short period of time. Um, so masturbation shouldn't be a part of that. Yeah. Okay. This is all. Uh... This is all really interesting, like things I haven't like really thought about. Well, we know, um, you know, it was a lockdown. They had all those videos about about semen retention. You know, I used to not want to watch those videos. Like, I still haven't seen some of them in full. My homeboys used to be watching that shit. I'd be like, why don't send that shit to my phone? Like, I don't want to see that. I don't want to be knowledgeable about that. I don't want to. I don't want to know about it. Yeah, yeah, they say semen retention is better for your brain. They say it's better for a lot of things, within inside of the the realm, but I mean. I think I'm a god and that I'm, I move very swiftly and you know that the Lord really, really works this one with me. And then I manifest a lot of things that I mean, I can't see. I mean, Solomon was God's most beloved king and he had 800 concubines, so he was dropping off dick everywhere. So, and it didn't stop the kingdoms and the things and the goals that God had gave him. So, you know, so I don't really think, okay. you know. Okay. Hey, your camera's shaking a lot. Are you masturbating now? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, cause this angle. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't. I don't really think that it's okay. we we talk about how much pleasure. Which I don't. I, this is another subject too, because self pleasure I don't really consider as a mental prison, but being engaged in the act of sex with others and trying to find that type of connection to lay down with someone, I think it's a mental prison on its own because it's like sex can be very daunting if it's not done in a right way. So well, I don't know what type of sex you're having. Oh. But, um, <laughs> because, because sex is supposed to be exciting. You know, I mean, you have your personal people that you link with, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're in a relationship, you know, you know what it's going to be given. And then sometimes you have your, as we're men, you have your fuck buddies, or your one night stands and I think you know I think sex should be like very exciting you know I, I mean things can become redundant in a sense because we're probably be doing things like being on Jack and Grinder forever you know unless you know get into a relationship but you know I think like me right now I've been practicing you know I've deleted all of my social media apps on that level you know to just um to just kind of pull, pull back 
you know, and um, I mean, you know, you can deal with the people that you know already, you know. So, um, but sex should be very exciting. You should, you should be sleeping with people that make you feel like the sex is exciting, not, not anything else. <laughs> well, I be overcomplicating and overthinking everything. What's your sign? Well, well sign. speaking of exciting and complicating, let's get yeah. into this next tool we do, okay? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, so this is the last one. We have Charmaine from Durham, North, Durham, North Carolina. Hey, Charmaine. She says, North Carolina, Charmaine. 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 Hey, Charmaine. Says, <laughs> I'm 22 with two kids and a baby on the way in a few weeks. I currently live with my mother, who is a pastor, and her boyfriend of three years. While living here, I'm expected to cook. I'm expected to cook, clean, and do our chores to keep the home up. My mother is really home due to always having something to do either with her full-time job or church events. <clears throat> me and her boyfriend have gotten really close, and he always confides in me and tells me how she doesn't have time for him and doesn't care about him, and the only thing she cares about is the church, which I agree. Well, about eight to nine months ago, oh God. he and I were home oh, man, this was beers, and we were just talking, and one thing led to another. And now I'm pregnant, and I'm not sure how to tell my mom oh my God. that I slept with pregnant him. Pregnant by her mom, mama boyfriend? By, That's a nasty mama boyfriend. And it's his baby. I felt he should tell her, but he stated he was afraid, and last month he actually moved out, and no one has heard from him since. Please give me some advice. Girl, you need to go that baby. It's eight, nine months later, she can't. Well, it's unfortunate, but um, it's just a fuck with the situation. The mama got to be a grandmama to that shit. <laughs> like, listen, that is some bullshit, okay? That, just give it an shit. Charmaine, Charmaine, you are a mess, girl. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what North Carolina got going on up there, but if the world is that small, baby, right. you need to get out of the floor what? because oh, it's other, I, it's I, other I, people that have sex this, with babies. Not that. Terrible. I mean, you know what? I was yeah. the person who, um, you know, I mean, who's very, very mm-hmm. damaged, who shouldn't be um, around. Both of them are damaged, right? So the boyfriend's damaged, the the, the daughter's damaged. Yes. And the mother's just out there with the Bible while her mother's <laughs> sticking down the daughter. That's just not understood. So, I mean, that situation is crazy. She's out there. There and she got a whole daughter. Um, that is, and a whole it's giving. Baby. It's giving. Go to Maury, cause girl, I have no. Go to Maury. I don't she, tell you, you know who's, who's the daddy? Yeah, I mean, we know who the daddy is, but that's not Maury. And I mean, it's most definitely Jerry Springer shit. Oh, but yeah, um, yeah. I'm throwing you know, the mama. But it, it's just sad, you mind. know. Like these type of conversations, like you think these conversations should have a bigger platform to get an understanding of. Of, of things that, I mean, was it just in the moment that her, I mean, we, we, we live by some sayings that, you know, God foresaw everything. So, you know, God could place a hooker and a fucking pimp together to make the baby and the baby get thrown in the dumpster. But the objective and goal was just to make sure that that person had got placed on earth, you know, and for you to do your, your, you know, for you to live your mission out. You know, so it's never really about the parents that was chosen. It's about the individual that came out of it. So, you know, I, you know, I want to take back saying, you know, she should just get an abortion because I was really being funny and sarcastic, you know. But, um, but you know, I mean, the baby might be a blessing in a sense, you know, just depending on how that's literally how they, how, how they handle the situation, rectify it, and put it into a better perspective. Because perspectives like these always seem so messed up, you know, when the daughter ends up with the boyfriend, which the boyfriend should have known better if you're sleeping with the mama. Why would you be sleeping with the daughter? So, okay. He felt like he wasn't getting enough because the mother was at church. So. He should have went out and found a different female. He's the one yeah. that's really in the wrong, to be honest. He's nasty. He pro- so I mean, the daughter's her. nasty too, but she probably wanted some attention and, you know, the man was in the house, you know, and it just happened that way. But for him, he should have had the the decency to think more, you know, and say and say no. He like, that shit is mad. He preyed on her, I feel. You know, oh, oh you, you, you walking around the house cooking and cleaning. So I'll, I'll say, like, all three people are in the wrong because, honestly, um, if the mom left the home to go to work and go to church and try to build a foundation somewhere else, and she didn't really check on the foundation of her home, then that Ooh, is what led to that situation. 
So all three of them are in the wrong, actually, because if you didn't want anything yes. to happen like this, you should have been at home checking on the foundation the mama should of what was there. Do you think the mama had intuition? She has the intuition, Maybe. but the thing is, is why... So I have a connection with God, but I don't have a connection with him in the house of a church. Because once you start to build a foundation there it becomes more of a um, showmanship. And it's just like, you forget, like, your church family becomes your, not your real family, but you focus so much of your time on church without realizing that your personal life is falling apart. Well, I mean, that's not the, I mean, for church though, I mean, I went to, I, mean, I, I was raised up in the church in a sense, you know, I think that, um, you know, church is about community. It's about, um, you know, it's about fellowshipping with the other people that are your family, you know, within God and Christ, you know, um, or whatever you're believing in, you know, if you're a Muslim, you know, Allah, you know. Um, so I I think the mother should have just been paying more attention all around. Um, church isn't a negative thing with, you know, her being there wasn't a negative thing. You know, it's I know not. it has bad, bad condemnations against it from how you, you just explained what you said. But, um, you know, I think that the mom just needs to... Um, huh? Yeah, I think that the moms, you know, um, y'all, what's the mama gonna say when she gotta be a granddaughter, a grandmother to this child? Like that's bad. That's bad part for me. Like, is the grandmama, is the mama gonna hate the child for a while? Yeah. Uh, what she supposed to hate is the question because she spent all this time at church. But church doesn't have make it. you invincible from she, having emotional, she, she, emotional she, feelings as a human being. Like the pastor isn't. Held, like he's held to a standard, but he's not held to the standard that he's not human. Because if you notice, most pastors and stuff are always the most afflicted, but they're the most afflicted because they have a shining on them in such a way that God connects with them. And they always are going to be tempted and, and tested the fucking most, you know. So in the best way that most of us have always tested is through our flesh. So, you know, it's always sexual with a lot of them. So you can't say church and look at it as if as if we're all churches. It's four churches on the screen right now. You know what I'm saying? Because the church is within the temple of us. But how many of us, when we're not doing what we're doing right now, holding conversations like this, we're doing other shit? Like, not saying we're, we're bad people, but, you know, we all have moments that could be considered bad. I am. Let's see. And Lord Jacob is definitely a pastor. <laughs> you say Lord Jacob? Yeah. Um, He's a pastor. Yeah, I'm a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I I love everybody's opinions. I think both the what we do is definitely opened up some conversations from celibacy to abstinence so to people, people who look that into, you know, also look, church talk. Literal Bible um, bumping. Right. Literally. <laughs> um, so that's the point of what we do, just to kind of get some conversation going. Um, but yes. This has been a pleasure. J. Dot Brown, thank you for coming on. It was nice meeting you. Well, before we leave, what do you guys think about, um, you know, any of the new music is out? Have you guys heard Bongos by Cardi B and, um, and Megan Thee Stallion? I like you. <laughs> the, you know, the visuals <laughs> songs like this, this is why that lady is pregnant by her, uh, her, her mama's boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> What? Bah, 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 bah. How do you think about? Um, have you guys thought about like you know Nicki Minaj is having an era where we're watching her be? Have she has other females out right now? You know what I'm saying? Like so we're having you know bums away. You know being compared to like other music with other females. You know do you think that um, you know do you think that she'll have a a great success run with the Pink Print? Um, yeah. What is it called? Pink Pink Friday Part Two album. Yeah, she will. You will. You I do. think so. I think so. I mean, Nick so, the song is flopping. So, so what I will say is, I'm very happy for female rap as it stands because we've had an era where we've started listening to male rappers who are not talking about nothing. Nothing. And now the Ooh. light is being shined back on female rappers. I think Jay all Jay of Kendrick. I think every. There are a couple of male rappers out there, yeah. good. but what I will say is it's time for female rappers to get their shine and appreciation. 
I used to be a soul Nicki Minaj fan. Now is opening up to embracing the realm of full female rap. I still yeah. love that she does have a lot of talent. Um, yeah. But we're seeing this trend of where um, different artists come and go because I don't really think none of them are shining over each other. Um, but I will say is I love the fact that that female rappers are getting their attention in the right way nowadays because it's like uh someone explained it to me best yesterday they was like why do female rappers always have to have talent and male rappers don't well i don't well i'm not gonna say that male rappers didn't have to have talent because in the era of music i grew up in rappers had talent period right you know so you know um as we move closer to like 2009 and 10 11 it got a little off with gimmicks female rappers uh today uh, and these girls ain't even talking about nothing yeah i don't think that female rappers today i like, mean heard no song where they talk about having a baby or you know delivering substance within raps you know and i think it's time for females they have gotten their flowers to be noticed now versus just making everybody into hoes and saying we're having fun accept us to make you know accept us for talking about sexual stuff now it's time to say somebody got to introduce some type of substance and i mean if it's the labels that's holding them back because i think when you're an artist period we come up with songs that got substance when sometimes we sit down and write you know um so that's just a part of us as we live in life but what gets promoted is what gets promoted you know for the masses um i think that you know a female rap now like to what malloy was saying i don't I don't think that um, it should be celebrated. I really don't. Um, I think that a lot of rap right now is really should not be celebrated. Um, you don't think Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, and, I mean, just as females as a whole, being dominant in the game, you don't think they should be celebrated for for having the successful run that they're having? You know, um, I, think, I think that yeah. If you talk about having a successful run, sure. But if you're talking about um, my pussy as tight as a nun, no, I don't. I don't think that. So you I celebrated for that. I don't I, think that there's nothing. I agree with you. Nobody or, is shady. Or if you talk about Megan uh, the Stallion saying that um, she telling people to sell their pussy for a bag, I don't think that's something to be celebrated for. But these girls do. I'm not going to stand here and take it back. Like. On Cardi B album, we had Best Life. We had songs that spoke on stuff. You know, Nicki Minaj album, she had songs of substance. Yeah. On Megan Thee Stallion, Trauma, Trauma Zine album, she had songs that was of yeah. substance that spoke about, which, you know. So those aren't the songs that, you know, just get promoted because that's not what the label and the... They, that's not what the label think the masses will be into because that's not what the programming is calling for. Well, the masses you know. also don't talk about those songs. No, the masses will be into anything that you present to them if if, if it wasn't about being programmed and, and controlled and keeping a certain frequency out there. Mm. So, did you see the movie uh, they, call, they Call Him Tyrone? I haven't seen it yet. I want to see it. See it. Cause I, yeah, yeah, I know I'm going to love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're going to love it. Um, it Very it's, about, bold. it's about that frequency thing that you were just saying. So. Yes. Yeah. But, well, I, I just feel like we're going through this time with this this real degradation of people who are just pushing out sex all, all the time and i i mean if you think about it most people don't want to be in relationships anymore relationships aren't really being pushed yes so, uh, having a, a side this side piece side breast is really what's the thing right now um and abominations and abominations <laughs> well okay <laughs> I mean, that puts in the frequency of, I mean, we, we, we can't be dumb on like, you know, like, you know, we, we know what the hell is going on for some of the us that do know, you know, that stepped out of the matrix to see that there is a matrix, you know, so we know what's going on out here. You know, we know why it's being pushed and what's being pushed. And, you know, it's not just a black thing either. You know, it's all fucking racist, you know, so it's like they got a whole, I mean, they're, whole, they're using our community to, to, to do the world even more. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, they're coming up with stupid laws in place, you know, that never even had issues. Like, who has ever heard of transgenders having issues and, and things like that when they go to certain bathrooms and stuff? And, you know, transgenders taking kids as if they're, like, pedophiles or... Th- those people aren't normally, like, into stuff like that. Like, they're looking for straight boys and, and trade and stuff. Like, they're not looking for no damn children. So it's like, is- we're being utilized and weaponized just because right. it's... Just because it's controversial. And it's a distraction. A to what's really, big distraction. It's a huge distraction to what's really going on. 
And what it does is causes infighting. So even not that there's no racist things in the world, right? I believe racism is real. All that. But I feel like if white people really knew what these Republican people were doing. It's not about just the Republicans either, because when you go read the Republicans' mission statement, they're... Oh, let me finish my thought. Um, what's going on with laws and, like, a lot of these companies that are doing things to us, all people, like, you wouldn't be worried about racism. We wouldn't really be worrying about black versus white, things of that nature, but they use that topic to keep us divided and keep us not talking to each other while they're yes. doing the huge damage behind yeah. the big Trump stories. Big, big damage behind the scenes. And we're like fighting over, you know, whatever. But really, we need to be paying attention to what's going on around. How, why is there 24 chemicals in our water? Why is cancer the way it is? You know what I mean? Like, there's something wrong. Uh-oh. Where did he go? Um, there's something wrong. I think he sent a message saying that he was going to be out. Oh, did he? Um, there's something wrong with that. Um, but I'm sorry. Go ahead, J. Brown. No, no, um, you're right. You're, you're totally right. You know what I'm saying? I do think that race is weaponized. Race is being used as a pigeonhole to keep... I mean, I think the whole even George Floyd thing, you know, um, I just think, you know, like, I mean, in the history of the story, you know, the, 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 the officer and him knew each other, worked at a nightclub, you know, had history, were friends, like, so it's like, but they knew how to utilize a white man in a blue uniform, putting his knee on someone's neck and them suffocating is is what's going to create a domino effect of people who would be emotionally engaged to follow whatever narrative and to keep these people in a box and keep them divided. You know what I'm saying? When it was more to the story than what it was just like that. He was white and yes, the uniform was blue, but you know, it's, it's more to the story than what it is. You know, will people ever believe it? Some people won't, you know what I'm saying? Some people would say not to speak on it for, the family say, but the family know what the hell is going on. Like people aren't stupid. It's just that in the media, you know, it's not the truth isn't really out there. We got Kanye West telling the truth, you know, but then they demonize him, you know, for speaking up on things that should be common knowledge to every fucking body. Like who don't know the Jews or black people for real, you know, or who don't know Egyptians or fucking dark skinned people, you know, and they're not white people with the tan, you know. Well, everyone started from Africa and everyone was black. So, <laughs> but, but no, but but honestly, being taught in schools and stuff, and a lot of the newer generation, they're taught that Egyptians are white people with a tan. You know, they whitewash these characters and these people. You know what I'm saying? They got whole issues going on with some of the museums right now, just because some museums that are smart, that have smart people working for their board, has you know induced hip hop into their you know showing off like Nas having an Egyptian cover of Nostradamus. He was a fucking black guy, or not black, because black is a is a fake word. We're not even black. But he was a brown guy. You know what I'm saying? Like he had pigmentation to the skin. He was melanated. You know, so it's like it's like everything is being used against us to keep us inside of a keep us in this matrix. Um so Sylvanus is gonna is uh one of the things that I've been thinking about recently is I would like to see us move past the days of being um, within labels and groups because mm -hmm. once we start to remove the labels, it's like we can actually function as one and we could get along with one another. Um, like I don't, I don't have a problem saying that I'm gay, but I think it is a problem when we actually. Um, put ourselves inside the LGBTQ plus yeah. box because yeah. it's another box that society tries to place upon us. So yes. it is it is nice to actually see past the labels that are placed upon us. Yes. I agree. One hundred percent. And I and I said before, um I don't I think that the the LGBTQI plus community isn't really a community. I think that we are a bunch of people who've been thrown together in a box. We don't even get along. No. <laughs> we don't get along. It's, just, it's a lie. <laughs> um, I, you know, we find certain people that we get along with, you know what I mean? But 
as a real community that needs to be people like out there throwing pitchforks at you know at us and, and whatnot um it's not real yeah no and like the only thing that we can get together for is a parade and that's it oh, yeah. in a bathhouse in a bathhouse yeah because our I mean, he did say it right because literally our our uh, community is over sexualized. I mean, I mean yeah. I mean, well, is that? I mean, we're also men, though. You know what I'm saying? So it's like saying men who go out and fuck a bunch of girls are overly sexualized. Just, I just, I do think we're we're more prone to sex because some of us probably knew about engaging with people on the internet and app before some straight people probably did you know what i'm saying you know so we were all that was our go-to because it's like an underground world for us you know and then you know so being fluid and having a bunch of sexual partners like it's just the norm i mean yeah guys you know i always grew up in the era where you know you're supposed to have fuck, fuck as many girls as you fucking can like that your body count was like an important thing in making you a player you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I carried over that ma- mindset with dealing with guys. But, you know, sometimes you do, you know, like we spoke about relationships are so hard to find because you may be a person that's ready, you know, but these days it's just like, it's just not programmed into people to be, to take the time. Like, have you ever known somebody that you like and you're like, yo, me and you really could be like together for life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll accept some things about you, you know what I'm saying? And I'll make certain changes about you, but... You know, people want so much cake and eat it too and see with, you know, with the grass is green on the other side, you know, that they'll end up missing up chances, you know, that that could really be genuine, I think. Promote your company and then. Uh, what she was talking about before about, you said about history and talking about, um, oh, I said about, I, I said history. First of all, hold on, Lord. Oh, oh, oh nigga. All right. Um. But uh, the reason why the females okay. are rapping the way they're rapping is, is there a fourth person? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not popping uh, up on my screen. I hear him talking though. Oh, you don't see? Oh shit. Okay. okay. The reason why the females are rapping the way that they're rapping is because of what the men rapped about for wait, so, so wait, long. Wait, one second. I just want to say Savannah is on the screen, y'all, and he does have a song out called "The The Moment." So. I, I, like to, I like to tell people about people, okay? Yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What's going on? How you doing? I have a song called Moment and Moment Photos out on all three platforms. It's English and Spanish. Please go check it out. My name is Silvana, so I hope y'all like it. Anyway, thanks. <laughs> but the reason why females are rapping the way that they're rapping is because for so long, we call we bitches men, rappers, back in the day. Bitches, you got to think about BET Uncut back in the day when all you saw was strippers shaking their ass and like throwing money on them. We hyper sexualized women. So the only way you were ever going to listen to what she said is if she turned around and said, No, nah, don't fuck me like that. They fuck me like this. Ron Hayden, you know what I'm saying? Or wet ass pussy. That's the only way men have even really begun to listen to what they know. What I'm doing. Hold on. That, I'm not saying that's the only. Let me say, I did say it's the only way, but I am going to tip real, okay? I'm going to say that it is a way of taking your power back. It is the If you call me a bitch, I'm going to yes. turn around and make bitch the word. If you call me a fag, in a second, I swear me and Lord are going to do a, a song called. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be on that bitch because I do call myself the god of all faggots. You know what I'm saying? You got the only word. That's where the black boy George stands for. You know, the black boy George. That's what they're doing. If they're going back to take back and embrace it. Now, are they taking it too far? That's according to what you believe is too far, what you think is too big, too wide, it won't fit. It's according to what you believe is too too much. Now, is, are these girls tripping with, in my personal opinion, my my what is it? My pussy took my booty hole, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> That's wild to me. But I have three sisters in my. I, I, I hate so, that song. Um, yeah, I actually grew to like it. I know you grew to like what it. What song? You pour cum in people. Downtown. Downtown. I mean, because you got to listen to it because I was only criticizing it because of what it said, you know, and I thought that was trash. But you know, I sat and listened to the flow of it, and you know, it was like, okay, you know, what I mean. 
it is what it is. You know, I grew up in the era. Lil' Kim is my favorite artist of all time. And, you know, we all know I used to be scared of the dick. Now I throw lips to the shit. And do it like a real bitch. So, you know. So, you know. You know that she is, is the queen bee. You know what I'm saying? She is the originator, the start, the head house show, the pink print, the blueprint, and all of the fucking prints. Somebody in the comments is saying that you're muffled. So I want I want you Oh I'm about to get off. I just came on here to tell Lord that skin was bombed. I just want to make sure you were heard. I was I just want to make sure we could hear you. Because I don't even see the person. Oh no. When I said I just I don't even have clothes on. I didn't even think he was gonna see me. Yes, but Chris. Anyway, bye you guys. Bye, bye. We're gonna do this song together soon if I like. I'm I'm for real. I'm done grieving. Uh -oh. Whatever. Okay. I'm talk. I'll talk to you. Bye. <laughs> um. Bye no, but I want to say about Little Kim. Okay, I I just want to before we um, wrap and it's like eight minutes. Um, there was I I get Little Kim right, but I think I feel like now. Sorry, my dog is barking. I feel like now there's just no like cool like. Okay, and, and not that little Kim was like, I still feel like even fashion wise, she didn't just walk up on stage and bend over and split her ass open. No. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, I she had class and grace. I mean, yeah, even though she's like, done it in a certain yeah, way, I, like, little Kim isn't even really remembered by sexual stuff, like, she's remembered for dope ass rhymes and, fashion, and you know, really rapping, rapping, and, and fashion. Yeah, I feel, and like, fashion. Now, and I feel like now it's just. Turn around every day, and and, and even on, if you go on, get on Instagram, there's even guys who you scroll up, and I'm in a public library, and there's an ass in my face, and I'm just like, <laughs> like, why? It's nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what the fuck is going on at nine a.m.? You're like, oh, I'm gonna post this. Like, there's no kind of decorum and i get it i'm not trying to say no nope. sexy. i'm not saying that but that, I, it's the difference between being sexy and saying selling that type of sex and selling yourself out you know um you know like we got so many content creators today you know what i'm saying and not anything against them you know but against them you know at the same time like a lot of them don't understand why they can't transition into other things in life as they get older you know what i'm saying you know um we have mustang mustang is a great example you know, he just um, got put into, he got picked up for the baby's video. You know what I'm saying? Had a nice role inside of it. Mustang is a very attractive guy. He could go for straight. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't doing anything wrong in the video. But the content that he creates, the people hopped in the comment boxes and was just like, you have Mustang? The boy that be, and it just went from there. And then the baby ended up removing him from the entire video. But I do feel like there's, I don't, I don't agree with that because I'm wondering how many females that are in the video are porn stars, okay? Like, yeah, but but at the same time, gay isn't, and then gay porn so, isn't a, a socially accepted thing on that level. Like, gay, we're just getting past. Then you're gonna have gay porn stars sucking dick on camera that you can always go pull up. So, but but the, there's the thing. So now, why are we allowing the baby to to come back? After he already did the um, homophobic shit. The baby really didn't do anything. The baby isn't making a comeback. The baby just really utilized the gay situation to get out of the game. So therefore he could go back to making him money the regular way without all the extra fame. The baby didn't do it because he was something against gay people. He said, shout out to all my people who wasn't sucking dick inside of the goddamn parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all my people who ain't, in, you know, who don't have HIV or anything. But he, you know, his dick sucked in the parking lot. Why is that okay? I mean, but first off, I mean, he didn't say anything wrong in a sense that was that was gay, and he was rocking with gay people in the, even in the same performance. It showed you when he jumped into the crowd on his mosh pit. He had, he had men rubbing on him and stuff. So it just showed you that he he was only utilizing those words because he understands that it could get him out of the bigger picture of what well you know i don't want to say all these i mean it, i'm knowledgeable you know what i'm saying i know what the fuck i'm talking about but you know you have to watch what you're saying on instagram because when you're too smart and stuff like that you know so, uh, by the way this is why i'm banned on Insta from going live for more than an hour because i said something 
Sheen, okay, can I, and I just want to say this while people are here. Sheen posted a little a picture of this little girl with a very t- like this like this kind of up outfit on, okay. And I was like, this is giving child porn. Porn. And I, I got blocked on Instagram. Yes, um, because see, they don't want us to say things like that because they're they're weaponizing and sexualizing the children and stuff, you know. Which you know, not not which I'm learning PR, so I didn't mean to say that Instagram. You know, what I'm saying I've been doing real well with keeping away from all of the the, the politic type of things. You know, what I'm saying because y'all don't want me to do that because y'all won't promote me that way. You know, but um, you know, but um, but you know, we're gonna get back to putting drizzle in people's mouth. You know, what I'm saying because they'll promote me doing that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it, it's funny the things that actually uh sells on social media nowadays. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. People you know, um, talented who are doing things that I'm just, I, I'm like, like uh, a friend of mine said, send me this link of this person who we think is really talented. And apparently they're. Well, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to say this without pointing out the person, but they're doing things now that, you know, publicly even, that, you know, they're naked. And it's just like, there's nothing wrong with being naked, but I feel like now it's like do or die. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's unfortunate, you know. Um, you know, I mean, it's unfortunate that some people just don't have the mindset to you know, to, I mean, learn how to play things what? for what, what it works, make it work it for you, but, you know, um, you know, some, some people just don't have the mindset to stand against certain things. And some people just don't care about having the mindset or having morals or having, you know, character and decorum and, you know, cool and self-respect not only for themselves, but for their family members and people that have been watching them. You know? Well, we have gone very conservative. Um... <laughs> Jada Brown, um, well, Malloy, did you have any last words? Because we're, we're going to start wrapping no, this. I wasn't saying, I wasn't saying that to you two. I was just seeing the comments. Our comments can get a lot crazy sometimes. A, a little crazy. Yeah, because I'm so. seeing them. What they want to see? What are they talking about? Because I stood up. Oh! <laughs> they speak here. Um, but this, this is a Sheen product, by the way. <laughs> So this is this is wait wait I bought this before I was banned so I didn't know about their child whatever things. So. Oh Jesus! See, we can't even talk about certain things that we know are facts. Because They're gonna put fact checkers on the on the live, y'all. They're gonna put fact checkers and say that what we're talking about has been fact checked and approved and 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 we're we're telling they, lies. They do and they do and it's really scary because you never know when you're gonna get shut down. But um, y'all, um, Jada Brown has his new single out. Uh, remind us again the name day party day party freaks come out you know what i'm saying featuring blaq is out and available on all platforms right now you know um also you know check out you know my other music you know we have bank account which has a video you know as well as hard to sleep at night one of my favorite songs that i've done you know um you know which is out you know um and you know um two two million up free recharge them all free recharge them all you know um and a lot more music coming out check me this saturday you know, as I'll be at Atlanta Hip Hop Awards, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, we, we, we just doing our biggest one this year. You know, it's um it's a great season. Shout out to Mr. Cake Me Happy and all of my Cake Me lovers and everybody who's been supportive of me this far. You know, um, and, you know, I just thank you, you know what I'm saying, for bringing me on and having the dope energy that you had. We really, we really had a fun time the other day. You know what I'm saying? It didn't go all the way like we wanted it to, but I think that it went just the way that it was supposed to. Yeah. And, you know, I, I really enjoy kicking it with you guys. There's going to be more time, so, you know, we're going to be part Shout out to KL. Yes. Um, oh, shout out to a few people. Um, <laughs> before we get kicked off here real quick, um, KL, Allen, they just um, launched their app for OMS TV. Shout out to them, and that's big yes. influence, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care what y'all have to say about people. We have to know when to push our people. Yes. Um, shout out to uh, Chasing Reality, who just announced that they're going to be doing Chasing New York. Um, big, big stuff over there. So I appreciate uh, all of y'all. Thank you so much for coming in, y'all. Um, Savannah's. So, wait, I keep say, I say Savannah because I'm from New York. Savannah's. Um, has this song Moment out. Um, I got things coming out. Malloy got things coming out. Um, yeah, peace out, y'all.
So this is the Pink Clubhouse for September 11th. Always remember, never forget. Um, okay, bye. What? We got to talk to him because I, I just thought of something. But we'll talk off the oh. Okay. Okay. All right. Most well, well, thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think he may want you to pour it in his mouth. I don't know. <laughs> Not that. Okay. <laughs> Have a good night. But I was really fine, you know, kicking it with you guys. You know, um, you know, we, we, we'll set this up again soon. I, I enjoy I enjoyed this. We'll do a formal interview with you. Yeah. All right. For sure. Peace out, y'all. Have a good night. See you next Monday. Bye. All right, y'all. Yeah, yeah.